Hi, my name is Dr. Raja Adnan Ahmed and I'm a consultant psychiatrist working in UK and with me is Dr. Abrad. He's a doctor who is going to join his speech training in UK very soon. This is a part of an interview series where I invite successful IMGs to share their experience of securing certain specialties. And I thought it'd be really good to speak to Dr. Abrad about his experience of securing the training in PEDS and how how, what is his advice to the other IMGs? Uh, so, Abrad, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, would you like to share your journey so far in UK? What have you done, and uh, what are you starting? With? So, uh, so far, uh, I'm very happy with uh, working in NHS uh, pediatric IMG. The reason is, I before coming here, I was working in Pakistan and in Ireland, and Ireland was obvious friend from Pakistan. I won't talk much about Ireland. Uh, but in Ireland, you find many of the IMGs as uh, junior doctors, as a senior doctors. But here in the UK, the culture is more multicultural and the people are um, more inclusive and more welcoming as compared to the parts of the world where I, I have worked. And so far, I'm enjoying work in NHS and uh, my experience so far is very good. So you were starting as a, started as an ST1 in uh, pediatrics. Is that right? I started as, uh, was, I was, because I was working in Ireland, I have six years of experience in working in pediatrics in Ireland and I have membership in Ireland as well. That is why I started as a middle grade here. Okay. But for training purposes, I am starting as ST1. There, is, there was a lot of discussion about difference between the Caesar, Caesar TP and the CCT. So I always wanted to get CCT and that is the reason I am starting as T1 and I will try to get my ARCPs done, uh, like competencies competency done sooner, the ARCPs and can reduce my ex uh, training period in total, but I'll immediately get CCT. Uh, so this is important for IMGs to understand. If somebody is thinking about PEDS, uh, 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 how, what is the, how, how do they go about applying for it? And you know, what is the requirement for that? Uh, in pediatric training, they can enter at from ST1 to ST4 at any stage. Uh, the requirements for each stage are different. For ST1, the requirements are only basic as any other specialty. You have to get their crest form submitted and have to do the few basic life supports like uh, ad adult life supports. And uh, in, uh, that, that is it for the ST1 requirement. And then we have to appear in the interview. For S2, uh, you additionally have to have a transpediatic experience. And for ST3 and ST4, you have to have 24 months of uh, pediatrics experience along with the exams as well. Uh, the Royal College of Pediatrics site is very, site is very uh, planetary in, in that uh, and you they publish every year person specific specification uh, criteria and the interview format every year the, and the recruitment application uh, submissions are around uh, for st1 and st around november every year and the interview in february and for st3 or they are around uh, gen and the interviews are around in march uh, for ST1 interviews are conducted like uh, all over UK and for ST3 interviews uh, they only conduct in uh, Birmingham but these is uh, the last interviews for round two they were conducted in uh, on. So then the the personal specification criteria is explained like self explain it. You can get it from the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health website as well but I'll just briefly go for ST1, you need crest from your MBBS and GMC and your complete CV with your showing your employment history. But obviously, if you want you, yourself to be an outstanding candidate for that, you should have an audit done. And every like which you think of or any other specialty, you have an audit done, you have a, uh, some research experience, you have some teaching experience, and, and you have some additional postgraduate degree. Those are the points you have. And the interview, they do few uh, stations in the interview, like uh, any clinical exam, and uh, which have the prescribing tasks and communication station, portfolio and reflective station, and uh, pediatric clinical thinking station, in which they ask a clinical scenario. 
and fun. ST3 and S4 uh, interviews, they have additional teaching uh, as well in which they ask you to teach a topic. To excel in this interview, you just you must practice for in the interview and you must prepare for yourself to be eligible for your personal specific uh, criteria. And if you if you are meeting all those criteria, it's very easy to get on pediatric training. Okay. If you want to enter on ST4, you have you have to have total membership exams uh, pediatrics done. And the member exam has four parts, so like three are the written parts, and the fourth one is clinical. If you want to enter at ST4, you must have a complete MRCPC exam done and 24 month experience, and along with additional things like neonatal life support, advanced pediatric life support, and then there is a level of safeguarding children course as well. Those are the required on the person specific criteria written. And for ST3, they ask you to do the at least two exam out of the three for MRCPH. And then for the 24 months experience, similarly, NLS, APLS, and for safeguarding, they just say you should do like at least level one safeguarding uh, course. But for level two is for ST4 necessity. And uh, to excel these interviews, you must have for S3 and ST4. Uh, for four levels, I haven't seen anybody going on ST4 without UK experience. For ST3, they boot from outside. Like if you have worked some time in Ireland and some other place, because they are middle grade jobs, and for somebody who has some experience in UK already. So these are the requirements for ST3 and ST4. So in total, how many years of training uh, you have to do to become a, a specialist, a consultant? How many years of training you have to do? In how many years? Is, it, it used to be eight years for nine, six months, but now uh, they are reducing it to 84 months. We just emailed that, that it would be seven years from on. And uh, uh, it, like say, seven years of training is, and uh, in those seven years, First three years are the basic training, and then uh, uh, last years are the specialist training. But in all those years, you you become as a general pediatrician. If you want to be a specialist, like subspecialist, then you have to either you're in the grid interview as your ST5, ST6, or if you there are some subspecialties in which you have to go at ST for a separate interview, like pediatric dermatology and pediatric cardiology. They have their separate interviews at ST3 level, and you have to do the five years pediatric dermatology and pediatric cardiology to be, uh, be, uh, to be in that. But if you want to do other facilities like uh, neonatology or uh, pediatric gastroenterology, pediatric endocrinology, uh, there are a load of opportunities like it's as vast as uh, adult medicine, like all those subspecialties are pressed separately in the pediatric subspecialty as well. And and you to prepare yourself for your grade review during your first training and you can at, at your grade you can uh, sell yourself to be the subspecialist and uh, training wise uh, we clear our exams uh, mrcph before uh, we start st4 like and, and we have to clear our uh, 10 parts before we start st3 and if we don't clear that we don't progress at the rcp uh, that's very good uh, to know. What about uh, a lot of IMGs ask uh, what is the scope of certain specialties abroad? You know, if they finish their training in the UK, you know, and they want to work in other countries which are English speaking or even go back home, what is the scope of, uh, of training in the UK? Uh, so far, like training in the UK in Pediat is very good, and other countries uh, uh, weigh uh, highly. I'll say uh, if we have like complete CC in UK with practice training and we can easily work in uh, New Zealand and Australia as a specialist and we can work in Canada as well as a specialist. We don't need their CCT or their training to work as a specialist there. But for Canada, we need to pass their fellowship exam before. But we don't need their initial uh, licensing exams or, or they are all exempt with if you have complete UK training. They ask for like five weeks of structured training in the UK, and then they accept this training and 
we have to do the fellowship exams. But for New Zealand and Australia, we don't have to do any exams or anything. Just show our CT and we can work as a consultant there. And for uh, Middle East, we can work as a tier one consultant if we have a CCT. And tier one consultant is the like have the consultant types in Middle East and work as a tier one consultant in Saudi Arabia and Dubai and all those countries. And for other countries like uh, Pakistan and India, pediatrics is a very good uh, specialty work in because of the private practice. And in India, uh, is uh, subspecialty which has like very good private practice and it, its competition is very high and we can work as a consultant there as well. It's up to one person who's like thinking to go to the countries depending on their preferences. But this is a very good spe specialty to go and work on. So if there are any young IMGs or even medical students thinking about PEACH right now, they're thinking that this is something they want to do in the future. What would be your advice? What should they should be doing? You know, how can they improve their CV or how can they make themselves right, right candidate for this uh, sort of training job? I will say uh, if, if they have the pediatric experience, uh, it will be better to for them decide like whether they can in this specialty or not because the pediatrics is different from other specialties and uh, that is one thing and the other thing is uh, at least like uh, if during their uh, say initial first jobs and uh, if they can work for like even few weeks or few months to see how they fit in this uh, subspecialty and the other thing is if they have to uh, build their cv uh, do i i will say that uh, they should do some course uh, related to pediatric the first ones are to do new life support and the advanced pediatric life support uh, these courses and uh, any quality improvement projects to build their cv that would be good like say first of all to complete the person specification criteria and if they have at the time must do something to uh, make some extra point in the, the CV. And uh, would you like to share your experience of the interview when you went for the ST1 interview? Uh, what what sort of stations and what what kind of things you faced? I think you talked about it already, but I think it's uh, relevant. We can uh, I can tell you about the ST1 interview. Like the, the tasks are like the we have to write out the say describing task it is like like if working in uk we know how the drug artex look like and if we haven't worked even in uk like the, the royal college has given the sample drug artex as well and the task was to write uh, uh, there's a girl who is diagnosed as a unit act infection and we have to try the comaxic lab gentamicin bnf was key and the task is done 10 minutes long just to they want to make sure how prescribing the medicine we are as per weight we are calculating the dose correctly because in pediatric they have to give the dose by weight like how many milligrams per gram and we are doing timings together on the writing time time correct on the the drug cardex so that was the first station and the second station was a communication station and they asked me to talk to a lady who was uh, 15 years old and uh, has been, has uh, cystic fibrosis. Recently, she has lost her comments with her medications. And, and that young lady was uh, not happy with her treatments because she has some issues like she, she cannot be uh, like independent in her life in a way that she has to take inhaler, has to take medicines and like there are some things she is not happy about she wanted a permanent cure of the, like with some medicine so like th th this is communication station which you face in any specialty as well and the other station was to uh, portfolio station in portfolio station they are uh, to talk about like the questions are like they are like standard questions which we, when we, we are preparing for the interview, any candidate would be preparing for these interviews, uh, interview questions like, how do I rate myself as a good doctor? Do I see myself as a team player? They ask me these questions and a good pediatrician. And they ask me like, rather like, what is a five star pediatrician? And uh, then ask me, what is the uh, most important thing in my CV, which I am tough? 
and then i answered this and then they asked me in the governance session they asked me uh, like you came as a uh, a night shift and your colleague is here who is uh, uh, who has chicken pox and came under as well what will be your attitude towards her would you respond so that is just like basically a governance question and the other question they asked me how do i reflect on a case in which uh, outcome was very good and what was my role that is the like typical question asked like well, give example of good case or a bad case and then they asked me a uh, clinical thinking station like they are a case of anaphylaxis like it came in who had nuts and he's uh, has strider and the lip swelling and all that how to manage this child so they are asking like clinical like a table viva i've been going through what through a, a medical school and in reaching station uh, when i last year for st3 interview they have me uh, tell us the management of asthma in acuting so so th these are the like the easy ones but what we have to do is we have to prepare ourselves uh, for the interview rehearsal as much as we can especially for the questions but if there is any uh, out of uh, blue any other questions and if you are prepared well for the spread questions we can make some something of the typical question as well but most of the like 90 percent questions are in the view or the standard questions and the guidance is very clear on the interview uh, on the application guide college website that like these will be the station every station is marked as a 40 marks on the review except the prescribing task prescribing task is 10 marks and other tasks are 40 marks each station and you can easily go like 35 40 even on some stations if you perform very good that's uh, nice of you to share your experience uh, other thing i want to ask you uh, you know somebody like me who doesn't work in pediatrics uh, we see this as single specialty but you know you were talking about so many different subspecialties in in page which you can experience as a, a trainee uh, can you tell us a bit more about how many subspecialties are there within the uh, within the specialty of page itself yeah. so in pediatrics a lot of subspecialties uh, say like in pediatrics people think like the children and small children and everything but say I'll talk from birth to up till 16 years of age. Like there are some specialties, and the sub specialties are emerging as well. From birth, we see uh, neonates, and the sub specialty is neonatology. And the neonatal consultants they do everything as any other intensivist would do. We intubate children on ourselves. We don't come aesthetics for intubation. As a neonatologist, we do cardiography ourselves called cardiologist we don't we only call cardiologist when we think that there is an intervention required by a cardiologist and we do cranial ultrasounds ourselves if we think like there is an in acute sex okay and then we do chest strains as well on neonates so these are the procedures pediatrics do on the neonates on a baby you can say one kilo two three kilo babies okay so this is a like very well you get a lot of procedures and a lot of intervention in it and then go on to like other subspecialty pediatric gastroenterology or pediatric uh, uh, respiratory pulmonal they do all the procedures like uh, endoscopies and bronchoscopies and, and the liver biopsies all those procedures are done in pediatrics as well if we like if somebody thinks to do interventions and all that and then pediatric endocrinology is a lot of scope like the children are not doing well they have short stages and then uh, pediatric cardiology itself has a lot of procedures to do okay and like children don't get uh, much about uh, what we say uh, heart attacks or uh, but they do have a lot of issues uh, children born with uh, congenital heart diseases and they do need interventions for that. And there is a, a growing specialty in pediatrics like adolescent pediatric cardiologist. Few years ago, child children were not getting the definite corrective cardiac procedures and now they are getting definite uh, uh, cardiac procedures. 
and those children are surviving beyond their 20 years of life and adult cardiologists do not know how to treat them same pediatric cardiologists treat them as a children they are treating them as adults as well so and then other uh, societies like uh, neurology and there are a lot of subspecialties dermatology is different in pediatrics as compared to adults nephrology is there and diseases and the pattern of diseases different in children immunology infectious diseases they're all there in pediatrics as well so thank we do you. all the procedures and those as well thank you very much for uh, sharing your experience and sharing your knowledge and i hope uh, a lot of imds will get inspired from your story and uh, and this information and, and will take, start taking your uh, feeds as a uh, as a career choice um, so thank you very much for joining me today no problem okay. thank you very much